Herb Smith here at Black Dog Studios in Rochester, New York, launching the beginning of the series, The Black Dog Sessions. Every week we'll be interviewing artists from upstate New York with the goal of showcasing local talent and enriching the already thriving music scene. This week we have Red Ink here with us. After a short interview, they will be giving us a short performance. Let us take you on a journey into the creative world of Red Ink. Hi, we're here today with Red Ink, and I want to introduce you to the band. We have DJ, we got Mike, we got Jack, and we got Matt. Okay, and this is the band Red Ink. You guys got some good stuff. Thank you. Really, really love your stuff. I checked you out on, on YouTube. You guys got kind of a following. Don't you have a bit of a following on YouTube? It, it's One or two. Growing. One or two people. It's more real. than one or two. <laughs> yeah. You guys are doing pretty nice. So I want to just, you know, let's get into it. Uh, first, let's talk about, like, your sound. Like, uh, what are your influences? You know, what, what kind of, what do you, where do you kind of get your inspiration? Well, that's I, three separate questions. <laughs> all right, let's start with, let's start with influences. Yeah, let's start with influences. Good. Yeah. Um, go ahead, man. Uh, it's interesting because we all come from a different sort of musical background. So, I mean, I can only really speak for myself, but... Uh, a lot of, like, uh, I grew up listening to what was on the radio around the turn of the century and, like, rock and metal music. And sure. then I started, I kind of discovered uh, progressive music with bands like uh, Tool and Dream Theater. And okay. that's really, I think, where I found my musical calling. So Sure. I was brought up playing uh, classical violin since, oh, like, wow, the age great. of four. So that was a lot of my musical interest for a while even though I didn't necessarily love playing violin at that age and um, eventually I actually neglected the radio for the longest time because I really just didn't like what was on there and then sure. I discovered bands you know like like Tool and Nirvana and I think that that's what really pushed me to play guitar and oh beautiful so you went from violin to guitar mm -hmm. or was it kind of a an easy changeover or? Uh, very easy I think that at least the theory and sort of musical sense that I had established, yeah. established with violin sort of carried over to guitar Great. pretty easily. So. Great. All I can really say is Bruce Springsteen. <laughs> <laughs> the really boss. Weird. I'm the anchor, yeah, the classic <laughs> rock anchor. The no, boss. And I grew up in a house with a father who played everything from, you know, real hard rock metal music to the the lamest pop music I've ever heard so I never really <laughs> knew what to latch on to but it's always been very diverse that's kind of why I think this whole outfit works really well for me yeah if if I were to grab your iPod and look at your <laughs> recently played list yeah what would be on there? I bet you Katy Perry is going to be on one yeah. of these. His brother. Miley Cyrus, actually. Jack, Jack Kroger's solo album was... Um, oh. the best album. <laughs> what would be on your, like, recently played? Uh, I just discovered an album that I've been looking for for a long time. Um, it's a solo album from uh, the lead guitar player in a band called Meshuggah. Okay. And um, uh, the, the group is Frederick Thorndendahl's Special Defects because... It's his his own solo group, but it's very interesting because it's it's got the same kind of mathematical, aggressive, technical um, attack that Mashuga's music has, but with much more of a jazz influence. Oh, okay, wow. So there's all sorts of you know uh, freeform noodling sections, and there's you know, saxophones. I like and, noodling and church organ and <laughs> diddling and weird stuff in there. So it's it's an interesting trip, but I've been listening to it nonstop oh, great. for five days. Great. I mean, I always feel like it's good to kind of listen to different types of music. You know, it kind of informs your writing. You know, Absolutely. And it kind of helps, and you find yourself writing. You know, different stuff. Well, where did that come from? You know, so I love that. What, what's, what's, what would be on your recently played? <laughs> I think I've been listening to the same album for a week, and it's been Allison Chain's Jar of Flies album because okay, sure. it's kind of creepy, and I, I'm not in any bad mood, but that is coming <laughs> from such a dark place that I just love it for some reason. Yeah, oh, I've been great! that nonstop. Great. Uh, if you looked at mine, I. Um, <laughs> Like it's kind of a, a strange spectrum. There's definitely uh, Tool, which is one of our biggest influences, I would say. But also Carnival uh, just came out with a new album, so I've been listening to that okay. very critically, uh, oh, yeah. kind of over and over again. Yeah. Um, 
like kind of analyzing it and right I definitely find that I find myself listening to music that you you need to listen to at least you know ten times over to really truly grasp it. Mm-hmm. Yes. As, as, yes. You know whether it's the rhythms or melodies or message, you know any of the above. But then you could also find stuff like, um, not to say that this isn't the same way, but Daft Punk and Gorillas on there too. Okay. So. Yeah. Yeah. I still got CDs in the car. Oh yeah. So I still got Bruce Springsteen's <laughs> live album. Here. Just got his live album. <laughs> All right, let's talk a little <laughs> bit about um, like creative process. Like, you know, you're a band mm-hmm. and you come up with tunes. So how do you go about like creating a song? Does one person come in or do well, you kind of get together or how does it work? It's never been two songs the same way. I mean, yeah. sometimes I'll come up with a guitar part and he and I will work together. Whereas sometimes I won't even be there for a song. One of our songs, Common Ground, I was... I was busy for an entire week. You regret that now. I had nothing to do with it. Not particularly because I like the way it came out. And it, and it was easy for me. I just came in and learned the parts. But it's, it's always different. No, None of them have been the same. There's no formula and there's no rules about it. It's just a matter of... Um, like We pride ourselves on being very, very democratic okay. and open-minded about anything. And we know that it's right when we all can agree that it's right. Great. Or it sounds good, or we're happy with, or you know, it's all a progression too. So we like we try to get it out live before you know we have any inclination to record anything. Yeah. Um, and that's how the song evolves. It's about letting it the song sort of dictate what's going to happen. Yeah. That way, it's the most natural. And also, it's more organic. Well, right. yeah. The song knows. The song knows. Yeah. It's not like we sort of map out a structure like, all right, we want a verse here, a chorus here, then there's got to be a musical break. You know, it's and that's what makes everyone so different, you know. And I think that also sort of ties into the, well, just how our sound does not have one specific. That's one of the things I noticed. Thing. Yeah, it's one of the things I noticed. It's always just what we feel like writing. We've we haven't limited ourselves, which is really freeing, as just a, what some people will consider just a rock band. Yeah. Well, we're here with Red Ink, and. Uh, Really great band, and now you're going to hear them. So uh, they'll be performing Common Ground and the uh, in the French Fest. Let's hear a couple tunes by Red Ink.
sessions we have the black dog sessions for questions and the question number one for red ink is what is your earliest musical memory can i take this one i think i'm gonna take this one uh <laughs> back when i took private violin lessons when i was a wee lad like four years old they tried to start me off like everyone else there's a you actually played with just a box and a stick and you practiced your form and i was like no way there's no way I'm playing with that. I want to play with an actual instrument. Of course, my parents would have preferred the box and stick, but yeah, right. that is my earliest musical box memory. And stick. Anyone you want to? Sure. Yeah, sure. I can remember playing, asking every single guy, time I got in the car when I was six. Every single time it would be, Dad played Born to Run. I got nothing before that. <laughs> <laughs> Great. You want to get a, uh, get a shot? Yeah, I, I grew up just always having my dad's you know demos lying around so i always remember the first thing i've ever really been exposed to were his demos okay so music was just a part of the part of the part of the family you want to give it a shot sure i was uh banging Great. on pots and pans with wooden spoons beautiful <laughs> beautiful okay question number two yes. what is the first song you played together as a band Ooh, that's that's probably uh it was a cover. It would be uh, "Sober" by Tool. I think was our first one. All right. That was before I was in. I wasn't in the band. I think you asked me, "We need a singer." The next day or something. Yeah. I just showed up because I I knew where he lived. Actually, I remember. There was music. Uh, we were all playing in DJ's basement, and everyone but me knew this song. So they were all like, "Let's just try it," and they played it, and it was amazing. And I was like, "I gotta learn this song." And we need a vocalist, so this is perfect. But prior to that, we played the same seven or so chords on a loop for up to 45 minutes and we're like yeah we're so good this is awesome nowhere even close so the first song was a just seven chord loop what'd you say sure. just well, <laughs> that, that was before jack had even even in, been in the bands but 
Sure. The the first thing we played as what was to become a band was, yeah, the same seven chords. All right. Next question. Really quickly. Um, what is your dream band, dead or alive? B Street Band. <laughs> Bruce. B Street Band. I'd have to say Tool. Nirvana. Hands down. A compendium of a bunch of different people stuck all in one there room. There you go. There you go. Stuff. <laughs> okay. All right. Last question. Where do you see yourself in five years? I hate this question. I see myself on my mind. I can't really answer that. I, it'll ha- I'll get there in five years. You know what I mean? Yeah, sure. That's, that's a good enough. I mean, I'd like to see us on SNL. <laughs> In a slightly more realistic sense, but I just hope to see these four guys, well, three and myself, on the road together playing shows. Yeah, Mike stole my answer. I was just going to say, hopefully we'd be touring in five years, you know?
Again, that was Red Ink, and uh, they have an upcoming show at the Fringe Festival on September 26th. Their CD is called Red Ink. I am Herb Smith. Thank you for tuning in today for the Black Dog Sessions. We'll see you next week. Take care.